Hello and welcome back to Rocking All Over the Globe, part 58, I believe, Club 4, Coritiba in Brazil. Hello, Marcelo. Uh, thank you very much for your kind words. Um, yes, I'm old, basically, but still managing and still going strong. And we have had a good run on this journeyman save so far, but I don't think it's getting easier. I think it's getting harder. But, and I think this season is going to be even harder, and we'll get on to that very shortly. We've had a good start for those people who are looking in for the first time. We've had a very good start to this save. We started off in Indonesia, spent a season there, won a double, and then we moved to Hiroshima, where in a couple of seasons we were champions of Asia, won the Champions League of Asia quite quite easily in the end and then moved to sundowns in South Africa took us a few seasons but we became uh, the we became the European equivalent champions of South Africa as well we won the South African version the African version of that quite comfortably and then we moved to Coritiba we've moved Coritiba up into the first division of the Brazilian leagues which is Serie A from Serie B and now last season we finished in third place which means that we will qualify for the Copa Brasilia what is it the Libertadores the Libertadores which is the South American version of the Champions League but just uh, hey Saul how are you doing so um, just a few items of housekeeping before we move on to all the news. Uh, one of the things is, you can tell I used to do presentations, a few items of housekeeping. One of the things, guys, likes are so important to me. So hit that like button, you know, like let's have a few likes today. And um, I see other channels like they, they use bribery. They like, if we get 500 likes today, I'm going to share my sherry trifle with you. I don't have a sherry trifle, so I'll be very happy with 40 or 50 likes. Very, very happy without the sherry trifle. So I know your memories are really, really poor, especially your soul. So um, just hit that like button and then we will have no worries. We won't have any sherry trifle but we will have no worries about the channel growing. And if you found this, if you're new and you find this on your suggestions page, your home feed page, and you're wondering where did that come from, hit that subscribe button now because you don't want to be like in two weeks time thinking, who is that guy again? I've not seen him, any of his stuff on my home page anymore. I can't remember his name. Hit the subscribe button now and you'll never be in that position. I think that's about it. Oh, and... Uh, Actually, this job is like being a nanny sometimes, isn't it? So come on, come on, boys. So um, the other thing is, I don't know if any of you know, but I have opened a merch shop. But it's and uh, it's being run at the moment by a guy called Bruce. And in the merch shop, there are these beautiful little kick some balls mugs and i think i think everyone should own one of these kick some balls mug imagine like we're having your mates around for coffee and then everybody is going to be saying can i can i have that mug can i have that but you can be saying no get your own this is my mug it's my kickball kickballs mug so get your own and then you you've got like power amongst your friends or if you're a nice guy you probably would let them borrow it but i wouldn't it's mine my mug so that's a few items of uh, housekeeping and, and pop in and say hello to Bruce because he's quite bored at the moment. He's very lonely. So pop into the merch shop and say hello to him. Make his day. Anyway, let's have a look at what has happened since since we were last with us in this journeyman save and we played a few games not many i decided to come back early and the reason for that is because it's my game and i can do what i like but no really there's been a lot of things happening so i decided okay um let's go back early because as you can see around here it's getting very messy and i think we're gonna have to play regular games to to show highlights of all these particular games so i decided to come back early um just to showcase good evening dear Vicken. how are you doing my friend and thank you so much for your donation much appreciated 
and uh, we um now I forgot my thread. Oh, yeah. So we played a couple of games last time, the opening two games, and we had two very comfortable 5-1 victories. And then we beat, after that, beat Chia Norte by two goals to nil at home. And then Aruzes, we went away and thrashed them by four goals to one. And Rio Branco, we dismissed five goals to nil. Now, these are quite poor teams, and the teams we're going to play today are not that much better. And uh, so I would be hoping that we can have comfortable victories. We are trying out the new tactic, of course, the strikerless tactic, and so far so good. The, um, the way it is working at the moment seems to be absolutely fine so we're going to play two games today we're going to play in comprehensive highlights as i said in my message yesterday and we'll be playing at home to cascaval and we will then be playing away at moringa and uh, i hope you are well da and it is good to see you back in this different live stream and we're going to have some surprises in the what now is the juventus live stream on sunday so i hope you can make it for that be good to see you and um there's other items of news first off let's have a look at uh, the um champions league draw because some of you guys may know better than me um in terms of this champion league we're we're drawn against alianza uh they come from i don't know where they come from they are from i don't know where they come from <laughs> they come from Lima. Um, I don't know how well they play football, but uh, well, you, well, they might be all right. And then we have this uh, bunch who come from, where, they, where do they come from? Paraguay. They come from Paraguay. <laughs> and then uh, this apparently is going to be our hardest um game I, against Godé Cruz Godé Cruz come from Argentina their three star reputation the same as us and the other two are two and a half star I think or maybe three star reputation the same as us so I, I think we've got enough about us this season to qualify from the group stage but not to go much further than that i think this is going to be a season of struggle and the reason why i'm thinking that is because when i look at the team and i rank them by age you can see we have a number of young players brilliant players some of them and with massive potential to be really good players and um, the likes of Helinho and Marcos Lempek Olivero David who wants a new contract Marquinhos Cancio Jesus Abba, Fernandez, Kumalo, Aguilera. These are great young players. If you look at Aguilera, he's already rated four and a half star, 20 years old, and has huge potential, that boy. And of course, for me, the best player in the world at the moment, Leando Kamalo. So I think with these youngsters and how we have to develop these youngsters, I think it's going to be a tough season. We have a squad, I think, of about 66 players at the moment, which is huge. Um, but I think we might need a very big squad uh, because injuries are piling up. And if we look at current injuries, we don't have any. So the minute I get in a huge squad, <laughs> we don't have any current injuries. But I expect that to change. Getting the old lady back to the top in Italy. It wasn't a choice. They just headhunted me. <laughs> and um, uh, came as an absolute surprise. The same as the Bournemouth job. The manager left and within three days I was on a plane to Italy and uh, came as a very very big surprise in the live stream yesterday so that is our task yeah um, but we have a big task here our, our goal is to win that Copa Libertadores and hopefully one day within the next few seasons we are going to do that and we're going to have a team that is good enough to take them on and win it Holding on to them, though, might be the problem because all these boys, when they sign contracts or when we sign them, they want minimum release fees. And so some of them we're going to lose, but we are replacing them. And we'll have a look at what's happened in the transfer window now. And there has been a lot of movement. And I'm, I'm not a type of person who does transfers very quickly. 
Um, I tend to wait a little bit, but players started going out of the door very quickly. Mostly young boys, but we did sell McWayna. He uh, went to Fluminense, and um, his time with us is up. He's 31 years old now. We have tons of young, talented midfielders. It was time to let him go. Sadly, we parted, though, on very good terms. Saldana, young goalkeeper, went out on loan. Uh, Ishiawa, he went out on loan as well to ABC. I don't think he's going to make it. Had tons of potential. He's not going to make it. And João Paulo went out on loan. Some young boys going out for experience. But we've brought three players in and we've spent a little bit of money. And we brought the first one we brought in was Paulo. Another young, interesting young kid. He's 18 years old, centre mid. And I, I, he's not got the best attributes in the world at the moment, but I like him. And I like what I'm seeing. I like the fact that his technique is well developed, that he can dribble the ball and his first touch is good. And if we can, we can actually improve his mentals over the next few years, I think this boy could be a very good player. And then we brought in uh, Marquinhos, who we mentioned earlier. He's a young centre-back. Again, he's pretty much the same as the last one. I like I like his attributes as an 18-year-old. If he develops, and his physicals are particularly good for his age, if he develops and if he can develop his fitness, then he could become a very, very good centre-back as well. But the star signing that we've made so far, and we paid $9 million up front for him, um, is Jesus Abba. Not that Abba, the winner takes it all. Not that one, but Jesus Abba. And uh, he is 19 years old, and he looks like a prospect and a half. That boy can tackle, he can mark, he has good heading ability and good jumping reach. His mentors are developing very, very nicely. His anticipation is very good. He makes good decisions and his concentration makes him absolutely ideal for a marking job. His physicals for a 19-year-old are stunning. And he already coming in at 19 years old as an important player... <laughs> <laughs> he is uh, Jesus Abba. He is going to be a superstar. He does have um, a minimum release clause, of course, um, 45 million for domestic clubs and only 17 million for foreign clubs. We are going to lose him at some point, but if we get a couple of seasons out of him, he's going to be quite an exceptional player. He, he's quite an inspiration to us, older Abba, because sometimes now in the dressing room we don't have a team talk. We just kind of like sing, the winner takes it all, and that kind of like wakes the boys up and motivates them and they're ready to go out and rock and roll. But I don't think we'll do that today. We'll save that for when we're off camera because I don't want people leaving too quickly. So, um... While I'm, while I'm just met here, just before we go on, don't forget, guys, leave that like. If we can get 40 or 50 likes, I'll make a sherry trifle. OK, so let's go and play these games. I feel confident about these games because they are teams who are not very good, basically. This is a one and a half star reputation team. Uh, where do they, Which league are they in? They're in uh, Serie D. But these games are never easy. Last year, I struggled in a few of these games. And hopefully that's not going to happen today. Now, I don't want to play Cipriano instead of um, Raquel Me. Raquel Me is a bit miserable at the moment because he's not getting enough game time. So I want to give him a lot of game time while these games are easy. And then he'll come to me and say, I'm really happy now, boss. And... Uh, Gobetti is now my number one goalkeeper, having taken over from Raphael William. I trust him more. And um, I don't know why my assistant wants me to play in a balanced way against a team from Serie D. And so we've got Gobetti in goal with Anderson, Jesus. Jesus. we got a lot of Jesus in the team. Jesus, Abba and Mustafa at the back. Pires, Atuesta, who's... 30 odd now and he's on his last legs I think and Galaza in midfield with Raquel Mee. 
and then Maxi Alves, Kumalo and Aguera will make up that attacking midfield three. And those boys are exceptional players. All of them are exceptional players. And if they fire then we will win games comfortably. If they don't, then we could be in trouble. I don't think we need to have the sound on, so we will remove the sound, although sometimes I quite like the sound. When I'm playing on my own, I like the sound. But we'll go and get on with this game. <laughs> he needs sacking, absolutely. And, oh, do you know what, dear? Manchester United are interested in signing Gareth Southgate. I really can't believe they would do such a thing. And we are favourites for this game. I want a strong defence dominating the midfield and the attackers. Well, we don't have any. Always when you're doing this, go back to the assistant and he will change his mind. So, <laughs> this initial thoughts... He will change his mind. I do believe that is a trap that is set by FM. Now, we should be in comprehensive highlights because that is the way I like to play the game. And we can get a feel of what is going on. We also get a feel that the highlights are not so imbalanced and every time the opposition have the ball, you're not scared that they're going to score. Um, which they usually do. But here is Galarza looking for Mustoifer. <laughs> yes, it, yes, I, I do believe that. Um, I would... I mean, look, he's a failed England manager, um, but he's a, he's a diplomat. <laughs> That's the best I can say, really. Tactically, I don't know how good he is, but we have a chance here with Rakelmi, Gazlarzam, Mustoifa, and unfortunately the highlight comes to an end. These games are like really crazy because you never know what's going to happen. There's these lower t league teams, they play out of their skin, and they, really we should run away with this 8 0, but. It doesn't happen very much, but Alves is in space. And I told you about those boys. Those front three that we have, Kumala, Alves and Aguera, they are super players. And if they unleash themselves, they will win football matches. And as soon as I saw him in that space, I knew that was 1-0. And so we are a goal ahead and what a start we have made. So, um, yeah, I mean, is it a rumour or is there some, uh, is there some uh, substance to it, DA? I, I really wouldn't like to say. And um, I do, I mean, yeah, I, th I think that if he might be second choice, um, and if they don't get their first choice, he might be the one that comes in. I, it would worry me, to be honest. As a Man United fan, it would really worry me. Um, <clears throat> that might be what it's all about, Saul. Yeah, absolutely. But on the field here, we are not actually playing particularly well. And uh, we need to get our act together a little bit. Um, because they are, I think, dominating the possession. And uh, this is not acceptable. Um, we should be doing a lot better. But here's Galarza to Raquel me. Raquel me. Can he come inside? He looks inside, finds Mustafa. You always know he's going to turn and look inside at that point. And uh, here's Galarza. And there is the new boy, Jesus Abba. And that's a lovely pass. And Alves is away again. Can he tuck this one in? No, he can't. He little bit lacking in composure. I've got to remember, he's just a young kid as well. And um, they are all very young up front. But they are going to be very, very good players at the end of the day. And I'm going to remember that Kamalo seems to have been around forever. But he's actually still only 19. <laughs> and he... Like, I had him in my first season in South Africa. And he came to Brazil from there. And it's like he's going to hang on forever. And he's like 19 years old. And so amazing. Um, I sometimes forget he's still young himself. And uh, we're actually putting the pressure on them. We are clearly the better side. We're showing that on the pitch. 
but we need to score goals. Hey Milan, nice to see you again. <laughs> and uh, hopefully we will get one or two more goals before <laughs> this game is out. And that was a good save at the near post. And it comes out to Pires. Pire We're always dangerous from the second part of set pieces. When we pick the ball up from deep, we're quite dangerous. And we do tend to take teams apart from here. So there's a ball into the box. But unfortunately, Aguero can't get on the end of it. Looks good so far. But as I said to you, it's like these smaller teams are very hard. Oh, absolutely. So I'll... And Kamalo! What a chance. Did he hit the bar or was that saved? Either way, it was so close. And um, I just I actually get much more of a feel in comprehensive highlights for watching a football match. Hello, Luke. How are you doing, my friend? And it just is much more of a football match to me. And um, I try not to look at it as a spectator. I try to watch the game as a manager, not a spectator. Um, and I do need to keep an eye on what is going on. Um, and in terms of players who are causing us problems, they're not really causing us any problems. So we should we should be actually fine. Um, and we are absolutely dominating the game now. Kamalo has scored from an impossible angle. And these boys, Kamalo, Alves and Aguilera. What a three up front we have. And how he squeezed that in, I don't know. The goalkeeper's a bit suspect, but we'll take it. It's now 2-0. Good evening, Stuart. Good to see you. That's very kind of you to say. I really do appreciate it, Stuart. And um, thank you for supporting the channel. Um, without you guys, this channel would not exist. So everything is down to you. And uh, don't forget, drop us a like. Anybody who's not done it yet. Um, Sherry Trifle, up, up for grabs here. If we can get 40 likes on this video, Sherry Trifle. Yeah, I'll make a Sherry Trifle. And that was another chance. And we are actually just absolutely hammering them as Anderson picks up the ball. And that's a lovely pass to Atuesta. And Atuesta has become quite a lazy player of late. That's why he's fallen from grace. And um, there is another chance here of Anderson. He's a centre-back. What's he doing out there? <laughs> if he can get the ball into the box, is that a penalty, ref? It's not given. So, yeah, Atu Wester's back in the side. He's a bit of a lazy player. I've been watching him in training of late. And he's um, reminds me of a sloth. Sometimes he's so lazy, we have to pick him up and carry him to where he's supposed to run to. He, I, I think it's his age that's against him, the same as me. And um, he's out of favour. And he's, he's actually only rated now as a two-star by the coaches. Um, and he came into the side, I remember, as a four-star player. Um, but we're giving him a game today. And here is Aguilera. I love that boy. He's a great player. First touch let him down, though. But Pires was there supporting him. Pires looks for Anderson. Come on, boys. Come on. We've got this. We are absolutely hammering at the moment. So why my assistant wanted to play in balanced... In a balance mentality, I don't know. We should be attacking. Um, but I'm quite happy with positive as long as we're scoring goals. And again, there's a foul. We possibly, if we can, if we dribble more, we possibly could get a penalty in this game. And again, and again, we could get a penalty. I think they're getting stuck in. And um, I think that I should tell them to run at the defence because I think they will make an error at some point in the penalty area and that will be much to our gratitude they they are getting stuck in and if we try to dribble past them they could well make an error but that's a good cross is the goalkeeper getting there yes he is Galzaro needs to collect that ball he can't at the moment and there is going to be a counter-attack but that will come to nothing 
Abba. <laughs> the name is great. Jesus Abba. He will pick that up. We've absolutely dominated proceedings. Our XG isn't very good, though, at 0.84. Should be better against a team like this as Raquel Me picks up the ball. He's a decent player and he hasn't played enough football. Cipriano is the number one wing back and um, he does deserve his chance. And there's a ball into the box and that is a fine save by the goalkeeper. And we really are absolutely hammering them as we should be. And um, I, I, I'm going to enjoy this experience, I think, doing this in a different way. It's a huge difference for me in terms of workload, and I'm getting old, and I don't know if I got it in me, that work workload anymore. <laughs> There's another chance, as it sometimes takes five hours to upload one of these videos. And, you know, I have had accusations levelled at me over the couple of years I've been doing this that I cheat. Well, now people can see I don't cheat. This is how I play the game, and... Um, this is how I get results, and uh, it's just, it's not rocket science, this. It's just filling up the pitch with players, creating space. And here is Pires, Pires into the box. And unfortunately, Kumalo, who is not exactly renowned for his heading, it's his running, his pace and power that he's renowned for. And uh, Atuesta with a free kick. Far post comes out. We are absolutely romping this, but I want more goals. Raquel me can't get it in. <laughs> and it's going to be cleared. But we picked up the ball again. And Kamalo's got it. Kamalo running forward. Finds Aguilera, who cannot get past his man. And it's cleared. I'm going to persist with running at the defence. Because I think they will make a mistake at some point. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But uh, I do believe they will make a mistake at some point. I, do, I actually... Somebody saying, Luke, happy saying happy Friday. It's Easter time now, isn't it? I, mean, I went out and bought myself an Easter egg today. I can't believe I did that. I'm like 66 years old. And I went out and bought an Easter egg. I'm just like mad. <laughs> I thought... Why not have an Easter treat? So I'm going to, like, tomorrow and Sunday, if it is Easter this weekend, I'm just going to stuff myself full of chocolate, which would be kind of fun. And it's kind of Premier League weekend. There's some big games in the <laughs> Premier League um, coming up this weekend, and I'm looking forward to that as well. And uh, Rick Elmy, can we add a third? Come on, boys. It's, it's gone out for a corner. They are actually quite decent at tackling. Um, they haven't missed many tackles. They've come close to giving away fouls in the box, but they haven't missed many tackles. So they are quite decent with the old tackle, but I still think we should be doing even better than this. And that was another good save by the goalkeeper. We're keeping him in employment for today. And uh, he certainly is earning his salary. I'm looking at the bottom here. There's a lot of complacency on the pitch, and this is this is a bit of a worry. Um, they are not as good as us, but complacency is not good. So I'm going to fire them up. Come on, boys. Come on. Let's get your your act together. But that didn't work because it's now half time, and um, I think I need to be. Um, Focusing on that. Do not allow complacency to creep into your game. And none of the players are playing particularly badly. Um, some are having quite good games. And we just need more of the same. And let's win it 4 or 5 nil at the end of the day. And then we'll all go home happy and enjoy our Easter eggs this weekend. And Again, they're, they're very good at putting their foot in, aren't they? Very, very good at putting their foot in. And this is something... <laughs> never too old for an Easter egg. You're probably right, actually. But this is something that Comprehensive Highlights allows you to do. It, it, you can pick up things like they are very good at tackling. And uh, maybe running at them isn't the right thing to do, but I am convinced they will make an error at some point. 
If we weren't winning 2-0, I might not have put that instruction on. Well, that's a lovely pass, and Raquel Mee's having a very good game out there. And you see there's another tackle that they made in the box that could result in a penalty. But so far, they're doing really well in the tackling department. And again, um, but this time, Perez, he's injured, Perez. Good Lord. And so we're going to have to bring on Haverton. Now, we do have another young boy who is a right wing back. Uh, he's called Udair, and he is a very good prospect as a wing back. So we're not desperately short as Kamalo turns <laughs> and Pablo, the goalkeeper, makes another save. He must have a very decent rating at the moment, Pablo. But his distribution is suspect, and that was well easily dealt with. Haverton, who's just come on, don't do anything silly, feeds inside to Jesus Anderson, who does do something silly. And uh, we've got to, well, I need to tell them to buck up their ideas a little bit. They're not playing very well, and this complacency is not acceptable. And that's a good piece of defending by Haverton, who's put it out. And Haverton has come on. He is <laughs> so complacent. He would have preferred to stay on the bench. Well, I would have preferred to not play him, pay him his salary. <laughs> and uh, that's his attitude. <laughs> and uh, they are dangerous. These little teams are always dangerous. We had this problem last year. Putting them away is really difficult. Um, I don't know why. Uh, it should be fairly straightforward to beat these teams. But we have we had trouble last season, I remember, in the Paranese Cup, putting these teams away. They It's like they play out of their skins. This is their competition. And I think they're probably going to score shortly, unless I do something. Because it's looking like they are gaining the match momentum. And I'm not very happy. They haven't created much, but one of them might actually fly in from nowhere very soon. And that was another good save. Comes Aguero, and he's put it. The goalkeeper is outstanding. I might have to sign him. Who is he? What's his name? His name is Pablo. Oh, he might be. No, it was a different goalkeeper. And again, another chance. And then results in another corner. I did um, try to sign a goalkeeper. I can't remember what his name was. But as soon as I made a bid for him, about 15 other clubs came in for him. And another good save. And it was never going to happen after that. We didn't get him. He would have been a really good young goalkeeper. But unfortunately, we couldn't get him. And again, this long ball that's easily dealt with by Mustoifer. I'm going to tell him to ease off the tackles now. No need for him to get involved in any naughty stuff. As Aguera looks for Ped Pedri... Who's Pedrinho? Where did he come from? Who was that? I don't recognise that person. Who is that? And uh, Raquel Mee has a throw in. Galarza picks it up. Come on, Galarza. Let's get this third goal. Let's get this game and put it to bed. Before the corner, I'm going to go and make some changes. I know it probably means we won't see the corner now. Um, but these players need a rest now. And looking at it, probably two of these front three can come off. Who's the fittest? Kumalo, of course, will be the fittest. Boschilla can come on on this side. And we'll give David a run out on this side. The, David is is probably one of the best, going to be one of the best players in the future. He's not ready yet. Um, <laughs> absolutely, Stuart. Yeah, absolutely. Keepers are always good till you sign them. Um, he's going to be an outstanding talent. He's not ready yet, but... The way he plays sometimes is just brilliant. Um, short of midfielders, I'm going to bring on um, Praxides for Atuesta, who's looking a little bit tired. And then I think 
will take off Mustafa because he is on a yellow card. We'll take off Mustafa and that will be our substitutions done. And because we've used all five, we'll probably get an injury now. Um, but here's the corner. It's still 2-0. I think we should be miles ahead, much more ahead than we are. But in this competition, I'll take a 2-0 because these weaker teams play out of their skin, especially the goalkeeper, who seems to be having an absolutely brilliant day, and he is. He's on a very high rating there. And another free kick. That's <laughs> again another chance that Praxides this time heads over the crossbar. We're coming up to full time now. And I think... Actually, I'm not. I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to keep playing the way we are. Noah Crisp. <laughs> Boschilla tries his luck and he can't put it in either. It's been all Coritiba. And um, we should have won this by a lot more. But we'll take what we're given because a win is a win at the end of the day. I have to remember <clears throat> that also this is pre-season and the, the boys have just like finished a very long season. They didn't have a break. I think they had two weeks and then they were back in training ready for this competition. They played two friendlies and that's it. We're up and ready again. And I think sometimes... We have to just acknowledge that it's pre-season. They may not yet be up for it. And again, Kamalo's first touch was terrible there. And I have noticed playing in comprehensive, you do get a sense of how good a team's first touch is. <laughs> and uh, I am enjoying playing in comprehensive highlights again so much. And it is, it's like watching a football match rather than just watching imbalanced highlights and can we get it? No, can't get it back. Paraxides, he has a shot on him. Go on, go on. He has a shot on him. And oh, he's hit the crossbar. <laughs> and that third goal is not coming, is it? It's going to finish. I don't like the shots on target ratio. It's probably going to finish 2-0 or 2-1. But a win is a win. And um, that was easy for Gabetti. Gobetti is, a, a, for me, a better goalkeeper than William. And um, I hope that he's going to have a very good season. I don't know where he came from, to be honest. I think he might have been out on loan and came back. But I kind of watched him playing a couple of games. And I, I think he's he's better in the air than William is. And he's, he seems to command his area a little bit better. So... I think we'll stick with Gobetti. William, for me, is done. Um, goalkeepers don't tend to last more than three or four seasons in FM before you have to change them. Uh, can we get this third goal? Boschilla, come on! And there's another tackle, but they've got away with it. I'm actually going to now go and tell them to not run at the defence because the plan backfired um, they didn't make the mistake I was thinking they would but it's a pretty comfortable victory and I would like to make it 3-0 before the end and there is young David and he has a pop as well that goalkeeper I might have to sign him I'm, I'm going to stop this and have a look at who he is he is an outstanding player. He's 34 years old, though. I can't sign him. He's too old. He's had an outstanding afternoon. And uh, well done to him. But uh, unfortunately not good enough to stop us from winning 2-0. And into the box again. Abba pulls it down. Boschilla into Abba. Chance. Kamala, what are you doing? He finds Heidegger. Praxides. Haverton. Come on, Abba. Abba's had a decent game. Um, 6.8 on your debut is always impressive. He's had a very decent game. I'd like him to score a goal if he could. And he's actually still up there somewhere, isn't he? As Kamalo. Kamalo, lovely pass. Kamalo's vision for a pass is brilliant. 
Haverton, Dilly Dallies, Anderson, Paraxides. This is good football. Just seeing it out, really. Raquel me into the box and still we can't get, find a way through. I think probably they're defending very, very deep. And if you look at the, the heat map, their line is almost at the edge of their penalty area, which means that they are defending just inside their penalty area. And I think that's why we've had trouble breaking them down. They've played with a low block, trying to keep us out. And they have done, by and large. But we've just broken them twice. And that's why we are ahead. And we look comfortable on the ball. Passing it around really nicely. Looking for that dangerous pass. And David was almost in there. He is... He just needs another half a yard, that boy, and he will be a great player. But that's it for the first game. We have won the game. And that was nice work, everyone. Brilliant. And uh, we continue our march. And we are, of course, with Atletico Paranense. We are top of the league. They are still yet to play their sixth game. But at the moment, we are 100% record top of the league. Six to nine days for Perez. And it's really nice. Raquel Me on form. Raquel Me is a good player. Um, your defensive work was very good. He is a good player. He just can't get in the side because of Cipriano. And we do have a little bit of a break here. We normally play these games every three days. But we are getting a little bit of a break here. And I do want to rotate, though, because this is not as good a team as the last ones were. And again, you, we've got players who are wanted. And um, Maxi Alves is said to be reluctant to leave, so that's good news. Um, Marquinhos, we can put him in the squad. Cordova, I'm not interested in. I think Marquinhos is going to develop into a very good player. And I might actually give him a game, give him a run out in the next game. Because I think it's so important to rotate your team in Brazil. I've learned that. That um, here in Brazil, you really have to rotate. Otherwise, by the end of the season, your squad has got no puff left. And... Four suggestions, huh? Because they might be getting games. He's not getting a game, so he can play. Oliveira, he's probably going to get a game. Marquinhos is going to get a game. And Lembeck is fit, so doesn't need to risk injury. I do still have some money available. I have 6.5 million. And I think what I'm looking for is an experienced midfielder. Um, we have plenty of young midfielders. But they're all kind of like two and a half star, the midfielders that I have. And I'd like to just maybe get a, a very good, experienced midfielder. There's somebody that I am looking at, um, but he's way out of my price list at the moment um, in terms of players who I would want to come in, who's just become available. But he's actually being scouted at the moment. I haven't added him to the shortlist. Um, and that's a Wolves midfielder who's a very good player with Premier League experience, 26 years old. But I can't afford him at the moment. But if we sell someone, then we could possibly uh, bring him in. And this team is going to be a great team. Um, I, I'm not sure they're ready yet. And it's going to take two more years. But this team is going to be a super team in two more years. Hello, Michael. Nice to see you. And I, I, I'm already happier, Michael, with the new format because it's comprehensive highlights. I feel like I'm in control. And I, to, to me, it looks more like a football match rather than just a bunch of imbalanced highlights. And I, I'm really loving it. And so far, so good. If these are not going to be long live streams. We're just keeping to the format that we kept for the videos. So that um, people who follow them afterwards are not getting too much waffle <laughs> and uh, stuff 
and um, it, uh, but already I'm much happier and even defeats will not phase me because I know that I'm in control and if things go wrong now it's my fault now there's a good little young midfielder but he's an attacking midfielder really and I've got plenty of them what I want is somebody who can play in that area of the pitch I don't want any more young attacking midfielders I've got plenty and I've got some very very good players as well and let's just go through this very very quickly and hopefully we will go out and uh, destroy the next opposition I'm, I'm the jury's still out on the on the uh, strikerless um, tactic jury's still out um, it seems to be doing okay but then these are weaker teams and uh, I suppose you know best you can be negative he's 33 years old it's time for him to go um, I, I mean, another one that we have is Perotti. So I do need to play the striker tactic from time to time. Um, it might be an idea to go that way now and to switch it over to the tactic that is the um, with the striker. And because they are a weak team and they, they should be doing really well um, in terms of this tactic as well and that will give Perotti um, a chance to play and it will ease the pressure on the centre backs as well because we only need two centre backs in order to play in this way I'm, I'm probably going to let the assistant decide um, like um, the Juventus save now, as I call it, I have a very good assistant manager. In fact, I took him with me to Juventus and I checked that he's in place and he is. Um, and sometimes I do. I do actually listen to my assistant manager. I think sometimes it's important, especially in these times when we are rotating. 4.2 million. Are you having a laugh? We don't need wingers. That's a waste of money, my son. We don't need that. I don't know if you've noticed, but we've gone with without wingers. We have when we use the other tactic, we have enough wingers. Uh, Ude is not going anywhere. He's important to me, and in fact, he's probably going to get a game today. And we will just wait until we see. Um, in fact, he didn't give me a suggestion for the team selection today. So William will come in goal. Just wrote Phil. <laughs> okay. Um, so William will come in goal. Good evening, Stefan. I Yeah, I trust him to make those decisions, Stefan, I, I really do. It's good to see you in the live stream, Stefan, happy to see you. Um, <laughs> hi. Yeah, okay, okay, hi, Simon. <laughs> and I don't know if you guys saw the tactic video that I uploaded um, earlier. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, is that probably one of the best tactics that I have ever seen in FM absolutely outstanding tactic submitted by Gianni what a tactic that is so Perotti will come in up front and uh, Haverton will play here because of the injury to Pires actually no Uder will come in Haverton can go on the bench give Haverton a break and Cipriano will come in for Raquel me. And my, who is my, who's my young? Marquinhos will come in for Mastoifa. And the other centre-back, Heidegger, hasn't played yet. He can come in at centre-back. And then in midfield, we don't want Abba. The winner takes it all. We'll play Paraxides. 
and I think David, young David, can come in there. Oh no, we'll play Naldi. Naldi didn't play, so we'll play Naldi with Paraxides. And then on the left wing, Atuesta is not a left winger. Um, Galzara is, but I, nah, I don't want Galzara out there. It's a chance to play someone like Kardec. <coughs> Helinho and Marcos are still on international duty. So I'm looking for Kardec. There he is. Kardic, I think, can play out there. No, we can't. So Kardic can come in here. And David, Galzara, and Boschilla can come onto this wing. You can see even players like Boschilla have... Um, why is Kamalo on that wing? <laughs> Boschilla has gone down in his ratings. That the scouts are not rating him anymore, um, which is really quite interesting. Um, where's Moreno? Moreno can play. Oh, Moreno gone out, has he? Got a midfield right. He's a good young player. Um, I'm sure I had Moreno in here. I'm struggling for an, a midfield right. This is why maybe I'm not using this tactic. I must have let Moreno go. But Cancio can come in here. And he can have his chance. He's a two-star player, young boy. He's a very good player. Give them, give them a chance. This is a very poor team we're playing against. I think they are... They're just like one star team. They're in Serie D again. Um, we sh the, even my reserves should be beating that team. I'll be very annoyed with them if they don't. So Atuesta, David, Galazaro, Aguera, Maxi Alves, rest. And we'll rest. Um... Comello, because what I might do is if things are not going very well. Yep. Yeah, this is the yeah Simon. This is the um. This is the journeyman save where we're at Coritiba in um, in Brazil. So instead of doing videos, I'm actually doing a live stream instead now, and much happier about it. I know it's going to upset some people, but if they can still catch up because I've made a new playlist and um, the videos will still be available to watch um, in that playlist. So I might make some amendments to this. Um, I might actually um, counter press, um, but I don't want to do them yet because we should be good enough. Um, to actually beat this team. I'm just going to go and uh, address this little glitch that the game has. And, um, yeah, we've been on a good run. Let's get out there. Let's win this. There's a lot of young boys out there. I'm going to tell them I have faith in you. Perotti, I need him to have a good game. Um, he needs to show me why I should be playing with a striker. And uh, he needs to have a good game today. And probably I will... Oh, blimey, they do put the boot in. Boschilla's in trouble here, is he? No, he's, I thought he was going to get sent off. And we do have a free kick. Oh, Boschilla was like... I just want to make sure that we're not getting stuck in. No, we're not. So I'm not quite sure why we are like make, committing these fouls, um, which I also noticed in the last game. And... We need to stop doing that, boys. And so far, so good. We've been the better team yet again. I got to get the fact we are playing in yellow. I'm normally used to seeing us in blue, so I keep thinking that we're defending at this point. Hi, Jonesy. How are you doing? And welcome to the Journeyman live stream. The new format. We you're a bit late. We've won the first game, but only just. Um, by two goals to nil. And this, unless he gets hold of this, we could be in trouble. Um, 
Yeah, if you play in key highlights, it is extremely repetitive. I'm actually enjoying the game now much more because I've got more time and I play everything in comprehensive and it's much more enjoyable as a football game. Um, and, it, and actually looking at it, you can learn things from what's going on on the pitch. And we're in trouble here. <laughs> oh, my Lord. This is a team from Serie D. I need to shout at them and demand more. Um, I do know something. I uh, don't know about Broken, but I, I do know that um, there are problems with it. I mean, they brought in, for example, they brought in intermediaries to help you sell players and said it was going to be a lot easier. I still can't sell a player. In fact, I think it's much harder. And when I, um, when I get intermediaries to help then all i seem to get is sorry there's nobody interested at the moment um so they're not much use to me at all um i i i mean i've made some very very good signings and um made one or two very very good signings in this transfer window i don't know if it's broken but i think the game is full of flaws you're probably right it's full of flaws this game and Perotti was not actually doing very well there, but well enough. Um, I need him to have a game today, Perotti. So come on, boys. A draw will not be good enough. And in fact, we have gone behind in the table. So they have caught us up. One of these days, somebody's going to give away a penalty for us. That's happening a lot. And um, I think we'll be OK, because once we switch in the second half, we'll score lots of goals against this lot. A Cipriano, come on, into the box. Oh, it's, somebody put your foot on it. Paraxides picks it up. Paraxides to Udair. I think he's a very good young prospect, Udair. But I have noticed, have you guys noticed that the opposition players are really tackling well? both in the last game and in this game. And it's like they're playing for them as small clubs. Their very lives depend on it. <clears throat> and that's why it's sometimes hard to get a result against them. But here is Uder. Boschilla far post. Can't get on the end of it. Not renowned for his heading. <laughs> and uh, I agree, Simon. Selling is very tricky. Um, it's not easy. And sometimes I have to reduce my price down to ridiculous levels before I'm able to get rid of somebody who's hurting the dressing room. Um, is he offside there? Naldi, was he offside? Yes, he was. But at the moment, it's nil-nil. I'm not too happy because we are suddenly second in the table now and not on top. And I'm just trying to work out. Are these They're defending quite deep. They're all, They're always sitting back. Was a strike, and so maybe what I got to do is try somehow to draw them out. Um, although looking at the heat map, they're not very deep, and so I think it's just a playing a patient game until we can break them down. Boschilla again finds somebody, but uh, he unfortunately <laughs> decides to lose the ball instead. Paraxides, Paraxides to Cipriano. Come on, boys, you're much better than they are. Nice ball to Cancio. First time cross and Perotti didn't even jump. <laughs> and that was a good tackle. Again, That they are tackling extremely well. And maybe what that's telling me is I need to go play the game at a higher tempo. Um, maybe we're just holding on to the ball a little bit too long. And... We could also get caught out here. Well done, William. He uses his head for that, but there's a chance. <laughs> and that was almost a freak goal. William's on a seven, but he almost gave them a freak goal there. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, um, but I do know, I think I've worked out how to do that, Michael. I think what you have to do is go defensive. It sounds odd, but you can't attack teams who are in 18th, 19th and 20th. You have to go defensive and then they get confused and then you beat them easy. 
<laughs> so it's kind of weird, <laughs> but um, it does seem to work, and it worked when I tried it at Bournemouth. We got some good results when I went defensive against the lower teams. I then went more attacking against Brentford, and we got a really good result against Brentford. And really, it should be the other way around. We should be defending against Brentford and attacking against Leeds. And these boys are giving us a little bit of grief here. I have to shout at these boys. and I want more. This is not good enough. It's not good enough just being the better team. We have to score some goals. Chance! Couldn't get on the end of it. But I'm, I'm not panicking yet. We've still been the better team. And I think we will sneak one in in a minute. Nice car ditch. Come on, come on. First time pass. And there again, another poor first touch. Not good. I found player traits a lot this year matter. Yeah, um, I, I never really bothered too much with player traits. But this year I do tend to look at their player traits and uh, sometimes I will take what they have away because it doesn't match what we're trying to do. Um, I do, I do think that's, um, that's correct. They do matter more. And I also think that team talks matter much more than they did previously. You can, you'll now know that when you turn a game around, it's because your team talk. And sometimes it's a good idea when you're watching, like these guys are not playing well and they need to be told they're not playing well. And the assistant might just suggest, keep going, you've got the ability. But they are not playing well and they need to be told. So sometimes go against him based on what you're seeing. And um, I'm seeing dreadful performances at the moment. And if they don't score here, they're going to have a rocket. <laughs> and... Uh, it is going to get to half time, nil nil, and so they are going to be told. I'm far from pleased, um, and sometimes it's just noticing what goes on on the pitch that will help you. Team talks are much more valuable this year than they used to be. I think I've noticed that. Perotti has not done what I needed him to do. I'm a bit distressed about Perotti. He's one of the Strikers who I just can't find strikers at the moment, which is why I went strikerless. That is a penalty, ref. Nope, not given into the box. Still can't put it away. I am going to switch something in a minute. I'm actually going to just try going into a mid block and see if I can pull them out a little bit because I think they're defending deep. You can see that they're defending deep and compact. And we'll try and pull them out a little bit. See if that makes a difference. And then I will just open up the pitch a little bit in a minute as well. Go a little bit wider. But this is good so far. Oh, there you go. What a manager. What a manager. And uh, did that have an effect? Yes, we're not looking at making any changes now. That's how you do it, I guess. <laughs> and when you're given time to think about things, that's what you can do. Mboshila, lovely shot. It's interesting that he's gone down from a three-and-a-half star player to a two-star player. That must mean that we have some very good players in our squad now. When players like Boshilla and Kardec are ranked as two-star players... We like players like Aguela and uh, Cumelo are just awesome players. Now, I think I need to be telling my team to get stuck in because we're losing every single tackle that, that actually happens. And we need to win some tackles. Get stuck in, boys. Otherwise, they will. we will find that they will score. If we keep giving the ball away, they will eventually score. And that will not make me happy. Well defended. Marquinhos is having a tidy game. He's just, I think, 18 years old. Is he just 18 years old? 
Yeah, just 18 years old. He's a top prospect, that boy. And he's having a, a tidy game for his debut. But I'm not too happy with a 1-0. And we need to be doing a lot better than we're doing. But that's harmless. Until William makes an absolute howler. <laughs> then things turn bad. But will even William's playing well today. But how hard is it to beat a team in Serie D in Brazil? And I wonder why it is. And maybe it is because this is a young team who haven't played much together. Maybe it's because they don't get a break. <laughs> They're just playing football all year round. And maybe I've made the wrong decisions here in terms of rotation. Who knows what it is? Um... But we certainly should be beating these by more than a goal to nil. Uh, we're coming up to the point where I am going to switch the tactic over. Cancio is going to get very tired and I don't have any cover on that right wing. So we will switch it over in a minute, especially as they are starting to dominate the ball now. And let's go and do it. Let's go and switch it over. And then see what mess we've made in terms of players and where they can play. Ude and Cipriano find Naldi and Naldi and Praxedes. So I need to bring on a central defender. A sass mate can come on. Um, was it Bushilla? No, Bushilla's playing quite well. So we need to keep Bushilla. Cancia's not having a great game. So Bushilla can come in for Cancia. And Uder is playing okay for a kid. He's not having a bad game. Nobody's particularly tired. But I do want to put my wing backs on attack. Because I want to go and get them now. And I think we'll leave it at that for the time being for 10 minutes. Give these boys another 10 minutes and see what they can do. I think this is a better system for this team, the strikerless. <laughs> There's another chance. And we're, like, we're just not scoring goals, are we? It's, it's one of those things. Why are we not scoring goals? I'm also looking at the size of the pitch. This is a very long pitch. And that might have something to do with why we're le losing the ball in the middle of the field. And perhaps I need to push up a little bit more. Go on, Naldi. Naldi! What a chance! It's in! It's in! Sasme has got the goal I wanted. And that makes me a lot happier. Because I was really worried they might sneak a goal. Sasme, what on earth is he doing up there? He's a centre-back, for goodness sake. And he has found himself on the six-yard line. And he's popped it in. Why is he there? He's not told to go surging forward. But an interesting choice he made. 2-0 now. And game over. Let's go and waste them now. Let's score a few more. We can do this. I'm going to go and make a couple of changes after this corner. I think we've done the job now. And uh, no, I don't want to do that. Because... We don't look particularly dangerous from set pieces to me. And I think you're on a different planet to what I'm on. So let's go and make a couple of changes now. And we have some big guns that we can bring on here now. And Haverton can come on for Oido. He's done a very good job for me. Um, Atuesta... Deserves another chance. He can come on for Paraxides. Um, actually, we'll bring... No, we won't bring David on. Because Naldi needs the game time. Um, up front... Oh, that's why Sasme scored. Because I'm playing him as an attacking midfielder. Well, not anymore. Because Aguera is going to come in. And um, actually, brilliant management decision to play him as an attacking mid. <laughs> and uh, great tactical decision because he scored. And you can't take that away from me at this point. 
And the the other wing back, he's doing fine, I think. Uh, yeah, plenty of puff left in him. Marquinhos is struggling a little bit. And so we'll... And we've got Boschilla, <laughs> who's playing <laughs> as, a... <laughs> as a centre-back. What have I done there? Um... Which means that Sass may. I want to undo that. And I want to. Somehow. I'm going to have to undo this. Until Sass may disappears. Okay, so Sass may. Wherever he is. Is already on the pitch. He can come in for Bushilla. Bushilla up to attacking mid. Now we got it sorted. And we're going to give a game to Oliveira. That's it. Now we're done. <laughs> and we've made the changes. Paraxides is going to be... Like, I have so many very, very good players. And 66 players in the squad. And it's really hard. Rotation is really tough. And giving them all game time is really hard. And I, that, I do look at the happiness chart quite a lot now to anticipate who's going to be unhappy with the game time <laughs> that does help uh, like Ra Raquel Mia picked that up from the fact that he was unhappy in the happiness chart and uh, decided let's play him let's give him some game time and make him happy and this it's it's this has been a professional performance it's not been a, a good performance it's just been a let's get the job done performance. And really, that's all we need to do at this stage. Just keep winning the games. And really, my my focus has got to be on the league and the Libertadores Cup. Not anything else. So this cup, although we are expected to get to the final again, and we probably will, but... It's really a secondary issue for me rather than a main issue. But we've done well today with two victories. It's been a good performance. I'm just having a look at the time. 21.42. We started at 8.30. At about an hour and 15. It does take longer. And I hope that people who are following along will watch it. I think it's been a good episode. And um, I hope that they will continue to watch it. But... I certainly have had a much better time. I'm just looking. I think I have one more substitution I can make. Does anybody else need to come off? Not really at this point in time. Marquinhos doesn't need to come off. He's having a very good game. as a 7 rating. He's done very well. And I think he's going to be an exceptional player. And we've won the ball in midfield at last. And there's Atuesta. Come on, Cipriano. One simple pass. There it is. Bosch Hiller's in. 3-0. And that is how you do that. What a super pass. And Bosch Hiller for a two-star player. He's playing really well at the moment. Which is good news because I can use him in these games. Um, and then save the likes of the three big guns until the league and um, the Champions League trophy starts. So he's doing a very good job for me, Bushilla, and well done. I'm playing with the thought of selling Perotti and really going strikerless, but I do want to keep a striker um, because it's always useful to be able to change. And we do have two strikers, and it is always useful to be able to change your system as we've seen today, when we changed the system completely and we finally got the goal we needed and we've gone on then to win quite comfortably. I think pulling the line back to a mid-block helped because it does pull them out and we pull them out and then found some space. And here's Bushilla, one pass, but again, we've lost the ball. It's like they tackle for their very lives. But it's a poor pass and Heidegger should pick that up quite comfortably. Does. Should look inside. Nice square ball now. Lovely pass. Sass may. 
Naldi's lost it, though. It was actually, in all fairness, it was a bit of a hospital pass. But well done, Marquinhos. And then he gives it away as well. I do. I have set him to working on his passing. Um, to make him a very, very good player, he's going to have to improve his passing, which is only about an eight, I think. And that's a good clearance by Sasme, a very good clearance. Let's get rid of this ball, boys. And that's a foul. We'll take a free kick at this point. I'd like to make it 4-0 before we end this game. I think we're capable of making it 4-0. I want to send a message to the other teams that we're a strong team. That we are going to be very, very difficult to beat. And I may even go... Uh, defensive for the um, Libertadores Cup. Um, don't know I'm going to play that yet. Oh, Oliveira, who is also another brilliant young player. And one day I'm going to have a team full of young players who are superstars. If I can keep hold of them. Boschilla into the box. Another chance easy for the goalkeeper. But it's got, he's put it out for a corner. That's a, a little bit of a glitch, that. I, d I don't like that animation where the goalkeeper drags it over the line for a corner. Uh, can we get this fourth? Come on, boys. It's not like that we can't. He's put it into Rose Ed. <laughs> or into the dugout, at least. Come on, one more. That's what I'm asking of you, one more. I'm very impressed with Marquinhos today. Sass May has also had a very good game, scored the goal at attacking mid and has settled nicely back into the defence now. But this boy Marquinhos looks impressive to me. He hasn't made many mistakes, he's been solid. He made that one mistake that we saw, but 18 years old you're going to make a couple. But I think he's had a lovely game. And Heidegger, Naldi, come on, one final good pass. And Makinos is just such a good player. Cipriano into the box. Go on, go on. Turns again, looks for Naldi. Will turn because we have an over, an underlap on that side. Chance! Oh, that could have been the fourth. Did the goalkeeper save that? What a save that was. Corner, near post, 4-0. Come on, boys, we've got this. Not to be... Boschilla still has it, though. Into the box, Kardic, Heidegger. That's a lovely cross. Unfortunately, it was well defended, but a lovely cross. And it's going to peter out, I think. Whatever they do here, it's not going to make any difference. We have one by three good goals to nil. We have another opportunity, but there is the full-time whistle. And we have beaten them. By three goals to nil. They are not a very good t good side, but these teams play out of their skin at the moment. And it's all square at the top, but as you can see who's going to finish first and second. It's exactly the same as happened last year. And hopefully we will continue to to do what we're doing and finish on top. And that's kind of it for this episode. And um, I've enjoyed it. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I wanted to come back early because we've now got all this starting. And we have the game against Atletico Paranese and then Godi Cruz to look forward to in the next episode. The two biggest games so far. These are going to be a lot tougher. We need our best players fit for those games. And we need good games. And so that's it. Um, hopefully we'll continue along this journey successfully. And thank you all for coming. I've had a great time. I hope you have too. And um, fantastic. And thank you, DA, for the donation. Very, very much appreciated. And uh, don't forget, if you haven't already, leave a like. Likes and comments are what help the channel to grow. And I want to grow, hopefully one day. Thank you very much for coming. Stay safe, take care, and we'll see you 
hopefully in the next one. The next one will be on Monday. Stay safe. Take care. See you soon.